Hi everybody, Renee in the Country Sampler Studio. Thank you for joining me today. Another exciting craft. And actually this one is taken out of the beautiful fall issue that I have right here. And I know some of you have this in your hands and it's so exciting. I know it's only the middle of August, but I am really ready for fall. And here in Indiana, the days are still kind of warm, but the evenings are starting to cool down. And that's just getting me so excited and so ready. I want to go buy mums, but I know I can't because they need to last longer than just getting them in the middle of August. So I'm going to wait, but a um, little taste of fall in the craft that we're going to do today. So if you have your issue, hopefully you do, um, we're just going to go through today this really cute craft on page five that Leah Jones did and her house was actually featured and it's a great house and great stuff. She's such a creative gal, but I was inspired by her angel and I know these have been around for a long time. It's not like a brand new idea or anything, but I've actually never made one. And so my way of kind of figuring out what I'm going to do is um, would I like to have that craft in my yard? And if I can take that home when I'm done and use it, then I'm going to make it. <laughs> so I've been digging around what I have here in the studio. And also I was able to go flea market and garage sale shopping last week, which is also another reason why I love fall because people are having garage sales and you can get out in the nice weather and buy stuff. And so I found some pretty cool stuff and I'm really excited to repurpose it. And even though I didn't realize it, some of the stuff that I found I can use on this really cute angel. So I'm really excited to put her together. I kind of put her pieces together beforehand so um, that I knew they would work, but there are still a few things that I may not um, have perfect because I've never made one of these before and she is my, my first one. So let me just tell you real quick some of the exciting things that I found or that I have um, when I was garage sale shopping. So obviously when you make the Shutter Angel, if you're going to make a Shutter Angel, you kind of need a Shutter. So um, I love the ones that Leah had because it's old and primitive and it's so cool. I couldn't find any like that, but I did find a couple like this that have the louvers on them. So I'm going to use this one today. I'm going to use that one. But I also found at garage sales, you know, for like, I don't know, a dollar, two dollars. There were quite a few of these. So it's not like you can't find them. And um, this one would work perfectly well too, but I have several now. So if I wanna make a whole family of angels or a whole host of angels, then I have several I can do that. So these really weren't hard to find, but it doesn't have to be a shutter. I mean, then you just don't call it a shutter angel. It's just an angel. But even if you just have a piece of board, like um, old weathered board, I happen to like to get a hold of those um, yard, like the privacy fence, the sections when people take them down because they've been up too long and they're usually treated cedar and you know, you, I've gotten them for as cheap as like 10 bucks for the big panel with all that wood. And you know, it looks like this and it looks kind of gross, but if you just sand it a little bit, this is actually what I made the wings out of. So literally all I did was take a sander and run the sander over it. And then I just whitewashed it with some paint. So I have a lot of these kind of boards at home. So I just made my wings out of those, which I thought was, you know, it's pretty simple and pretty easy. And because they are already like treated and they're the kind of wood that will survive well outside, then, you know, it's kind of an added benefit that it was already prepared to be an outdoor thing. So maybe they'll last me longer. This right here, these guys right here, these are what I was like super excited about. Um, they're just little spindles and I was looking on like the resale things on my phone here locally and this popped up on somebody's somebody's site and they had a whole box of leftover stuff from when they pulled down like a pergola in their backyard and so literally these were in a huge box and then there were just piles like stacks of wood and she wanted 20 bucks for all this stuff so I jumped on there fast and said where are you and can I come and get them? <laughs> and of all the ironic things, she literally was two streets over from the studio. Like, I kid you not. So, you know, this whole big area resale website and I'm searching on here and it pops up that she's right here in town. And so I made a beeline over there, gave her my 20 bucks and I got all this stuff. I didn't know how much I was getting because it was just like in a box. I got 72, 72 of these. Can you believe that? I'm like, do I know what I'm going to do with them all? No, but 
they are so cute and I am, trust me, I'm searching for ideas and they're gonna fit into our project today as angel arms. So there we go. These are gonna be the angel's arms and they're so cute to do that. But I love, I love that idea. And then I've got all this other wood to go with it. So repurposed shutter, repurposed wings, um, repurposed arms. The only thing I actually bought like that was new was her head because I didn't have anything circles and I didn't really want to cut it out. I mean, I could have taken my wood and cut out a circle, but I didn't want to. So I paid $1.99 at Hobby Lobby and I got a head. So I painted her white and then I did a little bit of glaze and this will be my angel's um, head. And I'm not going to give her a face because I am not good at facial features and I don't even want to try because <laughs> I like her plain. So I'm not even going to try that. So that's pretty much all I needed. Oh, I am going to give mine a halo, I thought, and I already went ahead and secured it to the stick before I started because I was a little worried about how that was going to work on camera and I didn't want to screw that up. So I am giving mine a halo just so you can see that. So let's just real quick put mine together so we'll see how it turns out. I don't, like I said, I don't know how it's going to turn out exactly. Um, I think you could put this together with a hammer and nails. I thought about bringing in my staple gun, but that would have been a little bit loud and kind of unnecessary, but it was, it would be fast, but I opted for some screws. So I'm just, I just grabbed some screws out of my little pile and um, a drill bit in case I feel like I need to pre-drill a hole, which probably nothing's going to split really, but I have it just in case. Um, so I, I did give this a little bit of like sand down and wax a little bit too because I kind of wanted it to look a little bit older. Um, but you know as well as I do that if you're going to put it outside um, that it's going to weather and it's going to look old pretty fast anyway. So I think this is the top of where this is. I need to do this. So I'm just going to try to lay her out here on my table so that I can put her together. Oh, get her arms over here. What I did for her arms beforehand because I wasn't really sure how it would work and I didn't want to have to do it on camera. Um, I took two of these, two of these guys. One of them obviously is her like shoulder down to her elbow. And then the other one that's going to make the lower part of her arm on her hand, I went ahead and I cut that end piece off right there. So it's a little bit shorter and it ends on one of those circles instead of being as long as the other part. So I shortened I shortened this one a little bit right here too for an elbow joint so that it didn't look too silly. But so by the time I got done, I have two of these and I think those will look real cute secured at the top and then she'll be able to hold on to something. I mean, that's the idea, not necessarily will she be holding on, but those are so cute and that was pretty simple to do. Just chop those right off. So, all right, so I'm gonna do my head I need to make sure that I leave enough room. Since I wanted a halo, and you also have to secure the head, you can really do it anyway. I didn't want her head like down here on the shutter because it, it feel like, <laughs> I feel like it looks like she has no neck and I didn't want it there. I kind of wanted it up here and I thought about drilling a hole in it and putting a dowel rod in there. But when I tried to drill a hole, I had no luck doing that because it kept slipping. So I didn't, I didn't do that. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to take this little piece of scrap wood that I put the halo on. I'm going to secure her head to that piece of scrap wood and then leave enough of that scrap to go behind and do it that way. So I'm going to do that. I think I'm going to drill from behind, which is going to be a little challenging since I put the halo on her head already, but that's okay. And I don't think I'm going to pre-drill these holes. I don't think my wood will crack if it does. Well then, I'll get another piece, I guess. So let me try this first one real quick. All right, so far so good. Probably should do two just so that it doesn't wiggle too much. Keep our fingers crossed. Sweet, no cracking. So it was a good sign. Okay, so her head is now haloed. And I left myself a little bit down here so that I could put her head on the shutter. And even though 
I could just do this from the back. It's, easy. it's obviously easier to do it from the front at this point. And my screws aren't going to show up too much because they're dark and I have a dark shutter. So, and I didn't paint this shutter dark. This was just, it was black when I got it. So, you know, you can always paint it a different color if you want to. Shouldn't be a problem. All right, there's one. Again, we're going to have to do more than one because if we don't, her head's going to bop back and forth and we don't want that. Let's see how long I made it. All right, so far so good. So now her head is on her body, her shutter body, and her halo is on there. So now it's just wings. We can do wings. And I'm going to put my wing just below where I put my, where the stick for the head comes down. And that might seem a little bit low, but that's okay. Cause I want it to kind of be level. So, and I made my wings just so you know, let me point this out. I made them um, a little bit shorter, like the bottom one a little bit shorter. And actually I think I'm gonna put them on this way. That probably looks better to put them on this way. There we go. So I'm going to put them on up like that. I almost put it on backwards. So I'm going to just put it there and I'm going to eyeball the middle. So hopefully when I turn it around, it looks okay. I have a tendency to not be able to put things level. I don't know why everything is always like off to the left when I do something. So I literally have to have a, uh, I level when I'm hanging things in the studio for a picture because I'll think it's level and then the photographer will get there and be like, mm, no, Renee, that's not level at all. So I don't know why that happens, but I can never see level. Two screws, one on each side. Not much of a risk of this old wood like this splitting because it's just kind of kind of rough anyway. So, all right, there's the first set of wings. So far, so good. Maybe give myself a little bit of space below that. And, you know, like, a, like I've said before, country decorating is not about being perfect because we don't want things to look perfect. We want things to look old. Actually, I may not have enough screws. I thought I counted. I don't think I have another short screw because the long screws are for her arms. Well, I don't think it'll fall off for us to see it here visually. So that's where we're at right now. Got her head, got her body, got her wings. And that's really not in center at all. Nope, not at all. I'll have to redo that after the fact if I actually want to hang it up. Boy, that's really crooked. Somebody's probably telling me that. I'll have to take off my wings and put them on right. Because <laughs> I can't, that is definitely not in the middle. But anyway, we're gonna move on because we could fix it. I did pre-drill holes for her arms. Like I'm using the corner of the shutters as her shoulders and I pre-drilled holes just because I didn't want those to crack and I didn't want to have to do that on camera either. So got a hole up here in her shoulder so it should go in pretty easily for me. I hope. If my screws are long enough to actually go through the whole thing, which I think they are, but they're not terribly long. I have so many odds and ends screws around here. There's like not, I don't, I need to actually buy a box. I don't, I don't buy boxes of them very often. All right, there's one arm. And I'm just gonna leave one screw because I kind of want to be able to rotate it a little bit without it being too terribly stiff. As long as it doesn't fall off, I think we're good. So, second arm. Oh, that screw's not long enough. Well, that's not gonna work. It wouldn't go through far enough for me. All right, well. If I had a screw that was long enough, then you would have seen that we could get her arms in there, but this is the only one that's on for right now. I have the screw. 
It's just not quite long enough. So here she is. The only other thing that I would do then to finish her completely, um, you could do whatever you want on the front. First, I thought I would do a basket and put some pretty fall stuff in the basket and then just secure that to the front. So that's definitely an option because that would look really cute if she had both arms. Imagine she has both arms, but since the screw is not long enough, I'm not gonna leave the camera to go get a longer screw. So here, here she is with the option of holding a basket. Super cute, that would be a great idea. I kind of thought it would be fun to give her like her own little bouquet. So if you're gonna do that, you can wire it on. You could, I don't think you wanna hot glue it on. Um, wire is probably the best thing to do and I have wire on it already. So if I just wanted to take the wire that I used to kind of hold it together and then maybe feed it through one of the shutter pieces and back around or even just around the um, piece of wood that directs, you know, the, the middle piece here. I don't think it has to be super fantastically secure. And I wouldn't spend a lot of money on the flowers, probably would do like an outdoor quality type flower so that, you know, if you are going to hang this outside, then you wouldn't have to worry too much about it falling apart. But we're going to pretend she has two arms and that her wings are actually even because they're not. <laughs> but regardless, she's turned out really cute so far. I really like her. And when I get her all fixed and I get her arm to stay on, she'll be, she'll be adorable. Now, the other thing is you gotta figure out how are you gonna, are you just gonna hang her or are you gonna stick her in the ground? So you could take it one step further and on the back you could give, you know, put a big loop of wire or, you know, something on the back so you could wire her to something. I have at home, which is what I'll probably do if I take her home with me, um, I have some tobacco sticks that are long and straight and pointy at one end. And I think I would just like screw this whole thing onto the tobacco stick as a unit and then, you know, stake it down in the ground. It doesn't have to be a tobacco stick. I just know I have those and they're kind of cool looking anyway. But even if it was just a stake of any kind that you wanted to put into the ground and secure her to, then she could sit in your flowers. And how cute would that be? Especially this time of the year, if you have, I don't have sunflowers growing because I didn't plant any sunflowers this year, but I do have black eyed Susans that are still kind of blooming right now in our area. That would be so cute if I stuck her out there in that flower bed in front with those black eyed Susans next to the bird bath or, you know, just anything. It's really, really cute. And then the kind of fun thing is no matter what you make yours out of, no matter what you have, you can always take the embellishments off and, you know, do it seasonally. Put a little sign on there for each season. If I would have had a little thankful sign or, you know, any kind of welcome, anything like that, you could just put anything you want on here. So, so many options and so many things to do and so many sizes depending on what a shutter you find and all that good stuff. So, just such a great idea um, and so versatile and like just so unique and crafty but really easy. So, so hope you enjoyed it. Oh, yep, I can hold the arm in place. <laughs> the arm that wouldn't stay on. So, if her arm was staying on, this is what her whole body would look like. So, we'll pretend that I am not holding on her arm and that her wings are even. <laughs> Sorry about that. I told you I, I, cannot, I cannot do straight. I, have, I should have measured it. So, there she is. So, if you are able to find enough stuff and put one together for yourself, enjoy. And we will see you the next time on our Facebook Live. Thanks.